I uh, just wanted to come and uh, speak some words and um, have a little tribute. Uh, it's been a while since I've, I've made a video. Um, I used to make these all the time, uh, very active. Uh, but in the last couple of years, I've, I've stepped away, as uh, some of you may know. Um, I think the last video I did on here was at the passing of David Bowie. Uh, I gave my, my words and my thoughts about uh, David and his life and, his, and what he meant to me. And uh, over the years, we've, uh, we've lost many. I think last year was brutal. And all the losses that we had uh, from heroes, musical heroes, and people that I really respected and loved. Um, and uh, there's many times I wanted to come back and, and speak, but uh, I, I just wanted to stay silent. I wanted to uh, um, do it in my own little way of uh, meditation for uh, my, th my, my thoughts and to keep them for myself. Um, um, you know, you know, when Prince when Prince died, that was a that was a big day for me, uh, along with Chuck Berry, um, Walter Becker, um, Chris Cornell. Uh, Chris Cornell uh, really man, I was supposed to see him that week, uh, and unfortunately he passed away. And there's been so many others, uh, but um, this video is about uh, a man, an artist that. Uh, has really inspired my life and has been a part of my life for uh, many years uh, since I was a small child. Uh, a hero, uh, so to say, a musical hero and, and just, a, just a good person, you know. And um, today we lost Tom Petty. Uh, Tom Petty um, really, really blew my mind. What inspired me to do this, I was, I was, you know, you know, they had a confusion about if he had passed away, and I had made my statement earlier on some, so, some social media sites about uh, uh, the way my little tribute, you know, my words, my kind of my eulogy, I guess, and um, and then right before I went to bed, they broke the news that he did indeed pass away. And he was surrounded by his bandmates and his family and his friends, I guess. And uh, it was a short life, but a, a short life with a lot of stuff in there, man. And the man that lived and wrote some beautiful lyrics and words and uh, really inspired my life from, again, from when I was a child till just to right this moment and, and, and beyond. Uh, I was driving to work today. I have a one of those uh, thumb drives with 8,000 million songs on there and uh, I put it on shuffle. I usually try to listen to an album when I'm driving to work. I, I, uh, I, have, I, have, a, I have a commute now and um, the shuffle came on and as the sun's coming up I'm going over a bridge that song You and Me from Tom Petty and Heartbreakers comes on and um, You and Me on the road ahead. Uh, I would have I never guessed by the end of the day He'd be gone. Uh, you know, I was, I was today. I was with my staff, and we were talking about things and work, work-related stuff, and probably just other stuff. And uh, I kind of just started scrolling through my phone as some of my coworkers were talking, and uh, I saw the, the news flash that he had a full cardiac arrest, and everything just went silent in my mind. Um, I quit listening. I didn't hear anybody. I didn't hear anything. I didn't want to explain myself. I, I just, was, I just saw his picture and I said, "What the hell is going on?" No, you know, uh, it's not supposed to happen. I just saw you, man. I just saw Tom a few months ago, and um, but again, life is so fragile. Life is so short, and and um, there truly is no time for fussing and fighting, my friends to let politics or whatever get in get in the way. Uh, in recent events, you know, there's been a lot of just, uh, a lot of hard times, hurtful times, and, you know, I don't want to get into politics or 
you know, serious stuff. I mean, this is all serious, but, you know, you never know, you know. And the way the world is just, it's, the world is on fire, you know. And um, I think realizing this all my life, I immerse myself in my records, my music, and my art. I try to turn off, I try to turn off, but it's so hard, and you start getting sucked into it, you know. But you gotta, you gotta pull yourself out of it, and you got to keep going your path, and don't stray, man, because none of that stuff, that's all poison out there, you know. And uh, Tom Petty, you know, so many times in my life, it's taken me out of all that, you know. You can turn on a record and groove, man, and rock and roll or, you know, country blues or you know, just whatever, whatever moves you, man. You can sing the, you can sing the songs. Those are good songs to move to. Uh, and uh, he, he really did rattle my life. You know, I discovered Tom probably back in the early 80s. It was, it was probably like 1980. Two to 1984, you know, hearing him on the radio, hearing, uh, I remember the first was Breakdown. Uh, and, and even as a child, knowing how smooth that sounded, man. And, uh, you know, hearing Refugee and American Girl. I remember that first, you know, that it, it represented so much to me is my childhood in the 80s it represents the 80s to me and i can remember i can remember things and doing things and being certain places you know but tom petty is a soundtrack uh, i was fortunate enough fortunate enough to see uh tom four or five times and, and in my lifetime and on different various tours and uh this last time i took my uh, lady uh, a lady love. I took her to uh, see Tom Petty for the first time. Uh, I'd missed him the previous few years before, and I was really upset about that. I really, it was really time to see him again, and because uh, I think before that it might have been the last DJ tour, or the Echo tour. I think it was the last DJ tour. Is last time I saw him before that. Uh, so I was really missing Tom, man. I needed some Tom, and uh, you know. But I continued to buy his albums, and, and he was still a big part of my life. But uh, I took her for the first time a few months ago, and experienced. We sat pretty close and just experienced. Uh, we got, you know, we, were, we experienced the spell, man. We were under the spell of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Our 40th anniversary. I had a feeling it was going to be the last, honestly, and. Uh, It wasn't as high as energy as I've seen him that I remember being younger, but it was just great. It was a great, great time, great show, and, and the energy was was there. Um, and I and I hate to think now that's it. You know, that's uh, that's, that's the last time. Um, you know, it was so screwed up today. There's people reporting that he died and he didn't die. I could, it was just emotional, and. Uh, I really put hope into that he pulled through, but then you know everybody's like, "Oh, he's he's still alive, but he's gonna die." You know, I'd see I was seeing shit like that, and people saying, um, "You know, he's brain dead," and uh, I shut it off, man. I knew it was coming. It's been a, it's been a it's been a real shitty day, you know. It has. Uh, Tom Petty's meant a lot to me, man. And uh, I'll share some stories if you don't mind. You know, that's what I'm here for. Uh, I'm going to show you what I got. I'm missing a few things, a few records. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I've, I have a complete collection, I think. But um, let me say back in uh, the 90s, I was in high school. And, you know, we go through that high school stuff, right? High school angst, high school, what does it all mean? Uh, sadness, depression, whatever it is. Um, trying to figure out who we are, you know, that's what teenagers go through. 
and um, I believe the, the year I started driving was 1995, and uh, I had a little I had a little truck that I would mostly you know to get to work and back to school and this and that, cruise around with my friends, and um, that Christmas, uh, the Wildflowers album, you know, I got it for Christmas that year, and. Um, I absolutely fell in love because I I'm one to always listen to lyrics, you know. You know. As as I'm getting older I get more into the jams and you know, I've always appreciated jams and stuff like that. But I was always a lyrics man. You know, Dylan was and Lennon and McCartney were, were very, you know, strong influences in my life. As long as Tom along along with Tom Petty, he wrote some beautiful, wonderful songs. And uh, when the Wildflowers album came out, you know, you're going through all this teenage shit, and uh, that album just spoke to me, man. Every freaking song on that album was just wonderful. And uh, I wanted it, I wanted to absorb it all, all the time. And I always carried that, that CD in my truck. You know, Tom Petty was in the front seat with me. Um, I used to cruise after work, I remember I'd just go out on these drives with, in the dark, you know, in the, with the moon, and I would sit out there and I'd look at, look at the sky and, and think about the future, think about people and girls and whatever. And uh, that was an album that just really, it was there, man. It, it understood me. And so I, I, you know, it was like, that's how I get sometimes I'll carry something with me and study it. And I'll just absorb it, and I'll just become it. And um, and knew it understood. And uh, many times it brings tears to my eyes because that's what I that's what I wanted to say. You know, I wanted to say that in that argument or or stand up for myself, and that's what I wanted to say, man. And uh, really just hit home. And uh, you know, twenty twenty something years later, I'm still carrying it with me, man. I still. Still, it may not be in a CD, but it's some form or another. I still have it. Uh, a few years ago, I was going through some stuff, and uh, I rediscovered it. I pulled it out in that time of need, and uh, time to move on. You know, that was a song. And uh, I remember being a teenager and hearing that, and remembering the stuff I was going through with that song. And you know, it's, oh, here I am at, at, at another crossroads with. The, decisions and things that I have to uh, I have to face as a man now and here I am again time to move on time to get going what lies ahead I have no way of knowing but under my feet babe the grass is growing it's time to move on time to get going you know and it and it, and it helped you know again but Tom was there and uh, I always wanted to tell him that, you know, I always wanted to tell him the story. I always wanted to tell him how I felt, um, how, how he made me feel, his writing, his, his that, that mood. And um, so the Wildflowers album was, was an album that really uh, embraced me. And Tom was there in the front seat, you know, I carry various CDs around and I had that big book of CDs we'd all carry with the this man. I had the tape that you put in the tape with the wire on it, put it on your, your this man, anti-skip, <laughs> you know. Uh, some of you may not know, but um, that's how it was back then. And uh, so there it was, Tom Petty was there with me. He, uh, you know, someone saved my life tonight, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Tom Petty. What a cool guy, dude. Uh, a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I was up in the mountains in Colorado. And um, it, was pretty up, it was pretty high altitude, man. And uh, that Mud Crutch album had just come out. And uh, I had it on CD. And um, again, you know, I would drive. I'd drive with it. And so I'm up in the mountains. And... Uh, stop at this little place to get some of the drink, some water, 
And I walk up and they got a little speaker outside and they're playing my, my song, man, I'm like Crystal River. Uh, Crystal River is just a kind of a psychedelic jam. And um, I was like, what? You know, I was like, this is too good to be true because I was really digging on Neil Young at the time. And I brought my guitar up in the mountain and I was playing Sugar Mountain and, you know, Helpless and all these songs, beautiful songs as well. And um, Crystal River, man, I, I'd already already had so many trips and journeys on that that song. And Tom was there with me, and uh, um, as I'm, I'm I'm driving, I'm driving out to I'm gonna leave Colorado. I'm gonna drive up to Wyoming. I'm gonna go play with the Buffaloes, and um, it just happened all week. I was there. There was there's a record store in the next town or the town up the road, up the highway, I guess, and. I didn't know, so I, I pull in and I walk in there, man, and I and I buy. I see the Mud Crutch album on vinyl, so I had to buy it. And uh, that was before uh, all all of this, you know. But um, it kind of that was one of the first albums that when I started really collecting again and building my collection, that was one of the first albums again. Um, and. Um, I've carried it with me all these years, and I, I, I adore it. I adore another extension of Tom Petty. Um, I just can't believe he's gone, man. I just I can't believe this. So um, I was upstairs, and I was going to sleep, you know, after it confirmed that he'd passed away tonight, and I was looking through social media, YouTube, and stuff, and and. Um, I saw the first thing I see is uh, Ryan Rocks, I think '84, and I always think of Ryan. We're not we're not very close. We don't talk, but in the early days of uh, of uh, a community we all lived in, um, I talked to him, and I remember him being so ecstatic about his Tom Petty collection, how much he loved Tom Petty, uh, the box set that I don't have, he he has, and um, he, I just remember him talking and showing these albums and. Uh, really digging on that and I remember talking to him a little bit but uh he posted a video it's the first video I saw and uh he's really really torn up about it man uh, you know gut-wrenching couldn't believe it and uh so it inspired me to say something uh like I said I've wanted to come back and talk about other artists in the past uh significant losses but I just wanted to do it my own way and keep it. Uh, and tonight I was I was inspired. Something, something moved and grooved me, man. I guess. And uh, here I am. Uh, so, you know, thanks, Ryan, for giving me that uh, confidence. I guess. Um, but again, Tom Petty, man. He's gone. He's gone from this life. Um, it just blows my mind. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. So uh, I've got some some of my records here. I, like I said, I have a few that compilation stuff that he's on that I, I didn't pull out and uh, different versions, uh, singles and stuff like that. But uh, definitely the rest of this week is going to be Tom Petty here and in, in the Space Cave, and uh, we're going to be playing. Uh, Tom Petty tribute, you know, that's what I'm going to be listening to. Uh, I've got to, got to film them, got to film my heart, my house up, my love, my space cave up with some Tom Petty. Uh, first one, of course, uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, 1976. Uh, breakdown, man, American Girl, among the greats. That's what started it. Um, you're gonna get it, Tom Petty. Actually, I just saw, like I said, on this tour, and he had this on the drum, the drum head, and uh, just love it, man. Just a great, uh, great logo. So, uh, Tom Petty, man, to me was he was a true rock and roller, man. He he really didn't give a shit on a lot of stuff. I mean, not in a negative way, but, you know. Again, I have another version. This is just a cheap version. I don't, I 
don't know why I didn't pull my other one out, but uh, this is a repress, uh, 1979. Uh, there's a documentary about this, and I, I think you can see it on the Running Down the Dream video, the, the film that came out, where they talk about how he, he took on the record companies and was a total badass, and people didn't do that back then. And uh, Tom was like, you know, you're screwing us or whatever it was. And uh, he hit these tapes and, you know, they went to uh, MCA, I think. I'm not sure. I think they were with, uh, who they were with before. I know they were Shelter or ABC or something. Uh, but anyways, it's great, great documentary. It's one, I think it's one of those, uh, I know it's in that film, they talk about it. Uh, and there's one part in that film I really love. It's uh, he's with he's he's producing I think a Roger McGuinn album, and uh, they're picking on Roger. You know he's these these fucking douchebags that don't know about music. And Tom stands up to him, man, and it's just one of the best parts in that movie. And you know he was hey this is fucking Roger McGuinn, man, and you know and you know this is the guy that the birds that jangly sound, man, and. Uh, he didn't fuck with Tom Petty, you know, he was respected. Um, this is uh, Hard Promises. Uh, they record this uh, when John was John Lennon was, and Yoko were doing uh, uh, Double Fantasy. And I know Tom and, and the guys, they wanted to go meet him, but John was uh, killed. And so I believe in the Dead Wax... Um, it says we love you, JL. Um, but hopefully, hopefully Tom is getting to meet John now, wherever they are. Uh, another one right here. This is on Long After Dark. Where the, where the guys right there. Um, you got lucky. He played that on this last tour, man. That is such a cold song. <laughs> I tell you, man. You got lucky when you met me. You know, fuck. Uh, beautiful southern accents, you know. You know, I always thought, you know, this album was kind of a, to me it was kind of like a country, but to me that don't come around here no more. Another staple of the 80s, MTV, just blew my mind. You know, the whole Alice in Wonderland, and the top hat, man. That's one thing I love with Tom, up to this, every time I see him, he'd pull out that, that chest and the light would come out, and he'd pull out the top hat, and put it on, play the song, put it back in. Because this, this last time, he, he threw it out in the audience, man. I would have loved to have been right there. Uh, Tom Petty. This is uh, Pack Up the Plantation, live. This is another one. So, And then, uh, I believe this is his first solo album, Full Moon Fever. What a great album. Everything on this album, just really great. Uh, this one he introduced Free Falling, I Won't Back Down. Love is a Long Road, Facing the Crowd, Running Down a Dream, Feel a Whole Lot Better, You're So Bad, Apartment Song, blah, blah, blah. Zombie Zoo, just try. Great album. Um, this is the album I remember as a child when this came out. I saved up my money and went down went down to the old Walmart and bought uh, some cassette tape. I still have it. Uh, and I listen, and listen, listen. I think the video with Johnny Depp uh, into the great wide open, you know, I remember watching that and it just really blew my mind. Um, and I think this is when uh, Howie first, I, think this is, I don't know if this is the first album with Howie, the new bassist, you know, Ron Blair took off and uh, King's Highway and had the box set, the long box, Tom Petty. Jeez, man, Tom Petty, just a big part of my life, man. And then, you, and then a few years later, Wildflowers, man, came out and just absorbed me, took me away to, to different places. Uh, after that, I remember this came out when I was I first moved out of the house, I believe, um, or right before I moved out. Uh, she's the one soundtrack and I don't know if I've ever seen the movie but uh, what a beautiful album Angel Dream uh, 2 and 4 and uh, Walls 
go up fast, climb that hill, asshole. This whole album just is really good. Um, just blew my mind. Asshole, it was funny because at the time uh, when, uh, when this came out, I was digging on uh, One Foot in the Grave for Beck. And that's a Beck song, and you know, he had the song Asshole, but then when I heard this, I was like, what? You know, you made it, you made it, Beck, with Tom Petty's covering your song. Uh, I remember seeing this tour. Uh, this is right before Howie passed away. Um, it's kind of a sad album to me. I, uh, I think Tom was going through a divorce maybe at this time, but uh, Howie, they were dealing with Howie, his addiction. And, um, you know, I think that he, he was on a bender or something, so Tom was kind of pissed off, and so let's just take the picture. So Howie didn't get on the, the cover, and uh, I think that was the story. Um, I don't know. But um, when I saw Howie, he, he played this tour right before he passed away, and I knew something, was, I knew something wasn't right. And we lost him after that. Beautiful. Then they come back with another great album, The Last DJ. Uh, really speaking his mind on this album. Didn't give a shit, you know. Talking about corporate greed and money becomes king. Uh, What's the, what's the word on the last DJ? He goes, uh, the boys upstairs uh, want to see what they can get, for, what you've always got for free, something like that. Um, so that's another great album. And I understood, like, when he was talking about, like, Joe, uh, you know, going to the concert and, and, and the real fans are way up top. And the people are drinking wine because I, I was experiencing that at the time, you know, with Roger Waters and seeing Tom Petty and stuff. You got these people up front that really didn't give a shit. It was a social hour, and uh, Tom Tom didn't like that. Uh, another great album, Highway Companion. Just starts off with Saving Grace, kind of a uh, John Lee Hooker, don 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 da don da don, 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 you know. And I, I did a lot of driving, and traveling with this album. Um, he was with me, man. So another great. Produced by Jeff Lynn, what a great album. And then this is the album that I got up. Uh, Mudcrutch was the band before the Heartbreakers. Uh, they they never recorded an album. You know, they had some demos and stuff of like uh, Breakdown and stuff like that. Uh, but they never, so it's pretty much, it's Ben Mott and Mike. And then you had uh, Randall Marsh on drums and Tom Leiden on lead guitar vocal and some of the song like Shady Grove and we do some covers and uh, you know just a great album Scary Easy Six Days on the Road I love that version uh, so yeah my crutch I never bought their second one I haven't got it yet it's still on my it's on my list to get after all these years and uh, then the Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers they get together they do Mojo, and I want to open it to the gatefold, but it's uh, blues out, pretty much. Uh, it starts off with Jefferson Jericho Blues, First Flash Freedom, you know, another great album. A lot of great, a lot of great songs, two, two albums, two discs, two LPs. Uh, and the final, it's Hypnotica. I'm hoping there's some, some things in the work, but... This is another one that was really good. Um, I love all their albums, man. I really do. So they were playing some songs off of this. Off the, I think they were playing American, American Dream, Plan B, on this last tour. They did play some songs, and then this is the last one. I haven't opened it yet. This was Kiss My Ass live, uh, record store day, thing, uh, live. 2013, Deep Tracks, Handpick Covers, uh, Twitter and the Monkey Man, Rebels, uh, let's see, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, I'm Not Your Stepping Stone, uh, Keep Going Bad, you know, great, great stuff. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, the Travel Wilburys. Uh, I had the original albums, but uh, years ago I found this box set and had a lot of goodies in it. 
But, uh, of course, uh, George Harrison, Roy Orbison, Tom Petty, Jeff Lynne, and Bob Dylan. Just a great album, too. I had that on tape when I first came out. Can't go wrong. And then uh, Roy had passed away, and then they did Volume 3. <laughs> Uh, which is good. And again, here we are. I I dread some of the some of the other artists that are that that may happen that may come along that eventually will come along. Heroes, but um, I wanted to come and just see some memories with, about Tom. Um, beautiful person, American icon, true rock and roller. Beautiful man, father, son, brother, husband. Um, he will be missed, but you know, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep the record spinning, the, the, the music playing the rest of my life, and hopefully, if I ever have children or, or whoever, I'll turn them on. Maybe there's some, some people that have never heard of Tom, you know, and it's as we're getting older, it's younger generations. Um, hopefully, they'll embrace them as much as. I did, and we all did. So, uh, I love you, Tom Petty. You have touched my life in uh, so many ways, and this is just an utter shock, and I'm, I'm heartbroken, I really am. Uh, but I wanted to come and just say some words and, and see where it goes, you know? So, uh, everybody be good out there, and, uh, Let's get it together, man, you know, got to, so uh, love and peace to everybody, and uh, I'll see you on the flip side, peace.